Hello and welcome to this film which is all about oxidation reactions. It's the first in a series of films about the reactions of the functional groups that were covered in the last series of films. So it would be good if you've watched that series of films before you watch this one. Anyway, hopefully by the end of this film you'll know how to predict what will form if we oxidise alcohols and aldehydes and you'll be able to write half equations for these reactions and to combine them with others to form balanced redox equations which should be something you've got experience of so I'm not going to spend too much time on that part of it. Okay, first of all let's just remind ourselves of the different types of alcohol because this is going to be really important in determining what kind of reactions we'll get. Okay, I've got primary alcohol here because there's one carbon attached to the alcohol carbon. If there had been none, it would also be a primary alcohol. Here there are two carbons attached to the alcohol carbon, so it's secondary. And here there are three, so it's tertiary. Okay, and that's, as I say, really important to be able to identify because the different types of alcohol respond very differently to oxidizing agents. Okay, we're going to start off by looking at the primary alcohols. And actually, before we start this, let's just remind ourselves of a couple of common oxidizing agents. So maybe dichromate would be one in acidic conditions, and permanganate would be another, which can be used in acidic or basic conditions, but we'll only worry about the acidic ones. So these are the two commonly seen oxidizing agents um, when it comes to oxidizing organic compounds. Um, we're starting here with a primary alcohol. Okay, there's my alcohol group, it's got one carbon attached, this is ethanol. And if I oxidize ethanol with one of these, and I oxidize it partially, I'll turn it into an aldehyde. So here's ethanol. Okay, so anytime I oxidize a primary alcohol partially, I'll turn it into an aldehyde. If I oxidize it completely, I'll turn it into a carboxylic acid. So here's ethanoic acid. Okay, now I've done it with a two carbon chain, but I could have done it with any length chain. Okay, as long as I've got a primary alcohol, I can oxidize that alcohol a little bit and turn it into an aldehyde, and I can oxidize it a lot and turn it into a carboxylic acid. Alternatively, I could just start with an aldehyde and I could oxidize that to a carboxylic acid. Let's just have a look at why this can be called oxidation. If I highlight the carbon that's been oxidized, we can see that here it's lost a hydrogen and another hydrogen, so it's lost hydrogens, remember that's one way of describing oxidation. We'll see later that they're losing electrons as well. Okay, and here it's gaining an oxygen, okay, and that's another way of describing oxidation. So alcohol to aldehyde loses two hydrogens, aldehyde to carboxylic acid gains one oxygen atom. Okay, so that's the oxidation of primary alcohols and aldehydes covered. Now we'll have a look at the oxidation of secondary alcohols. So just highlighting the alcohol functional group here and highlighting what it's turning into. Okay, here we've got propan-2-ol. If I'd used propan-1-ol, that would have just been a primary alcohol, so I'd have seen very similar reactions to what we saw on the last slide. But here it's turning into a, not an aldehyde anymore, but a ketone. This is propanone. So if I oxidize a secondary alcohol with one of those two oxidizing agents that we've talked about before. I won't form an aldehyde, I'll form a ketone, and ketones can't be oxidized further under the sort of conditions that we look at in the waste course. Okay, So <clears throat> if I have a secondary alcohol, I can oxidize it to a ketone. I can't oxidize a ketone. Okay. Now, this slide looks pretty empty, um, and that's because you can't oxidize tertiary alcohols under the sort of conditions that we cover in the waste course. So nothing to basically <laughs> bother ourselves with there. Okay, Tertiary alcohols can't be oxidized. Anyway, let's have a look at the half equations. This can be fairly quick because we've done this sort of thing before. If I said I'm turning ethanol into ethanol, then I'd be starting with CH3, CH2, OH. And I'm turning into CH3, CHO. How do I write a half equation for that? Well, I make sure that the atom that's been oxidized or reduced is balanced first, so that's the carbon atom. Okay, and there's two of them there and two of them there, so that's fine. Then balance any imbalance of oxygens using water, but they're the same. There's two more hydrogens over here than there are there, so I add two H plus over here and two electrons to balance up the charge. If I'd been going from ethanol to ethanoic acid, 
then I'd have a slightly different half equation. Okay, I'll be turning into CH3COOH, and this time there is an imbalance of oxygens, so I'm going to add a water here to balance that up. Now I've got four more H's over here, so plus four H plus and four electrons. So basically writing these half equations isn't anything new. As long as you can write the formula of the reactant and the product, then you can go from there. Okay? But if you don't know what your alcohol gets oxidized to, then writing the half equation will be very tough, obviously. Okay, moving on to combining half equations. Um, a couple of things in this question that we just want to look out for and they're sort of hints as to what we're doing and some things simply may be there to confuse or at least they confuse some students. Okay, we've got butan 1-ol, that's a primary alcohol. It's mixed with sulfuric acid, which is the confusing thing because people think, well, what do alcohols do when I react them with acids? And then we've got an excess, that's important, of potassium dichromate ions. So we've got dichromate ions which only work in acidic conditions, so that's why the sulfuric acid is there. So this is kind of a bit of a red herring. Okay, and we've got an excess of the dichromate, which means that our alcohol is going to be oxidized as much as it can be. So it's not going to be oxidized to the aldehyde, it's going to be oxidized to the carboxylic acid. So let's write an equation for that CH3, CH2, CH2 and another one, CH2OH, turning into butanoic acid. CH3, CH2, CH2, COOH. Okay, and as before, carbons are the same, more oxygens over here, so we have water, now we've got four more H's over there, so plus four H plus and four electrons. Now the dichromate equation I can get off my data sheet, or I can figure it out, whichever I prefer, but we've got dichromate ions turning into chromium 3 plus ions and we need seven waters over here okay and 14 H plus and six electrons as I say that equations on your data sheet and you can normally look it up the final stage is something that we've done many times before we check the electrons we multiply this equation by 3 and this by 2 to make sure that there's the same number of electrons in both of them and then I write my overall equation which will now be 3 CH3 CH2 CH2, CH2OH, plus three waters, plus two dichromate ions, Cr2O7, two minus, plus 28H plus, and the electrons are going to cancel, so then I've got three butanoic acids, three CH3, CH2, CH2, COOH, and 12H plus and 4 Cr3 plus and 14 H2O and then the last stage of this is just to cancel anything that appears on both sides so I'm going to turn that into an 11 and I'm going to turn that into a 16 by cancelling the H pluses okay so done that fairly quickly because it's something that we should already know how to do all right so hopefully you feel by the end of this film as though you know how to predict the oxidation products of alcohols and aldehydes and hopefully you've reminded yourself i suppose of how to write half equations from the redox topic but you've put it into this context that we've been looking at here um good idea to practice these as uh, not long after watching the film so that you can get familiar with these ideas but if you've got any questions or if any, if any of it didn't make sense or if there was any mistakes in there that you'd like to point out then please feel free to post a comment on the YouTube or to come and see me.